Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, finally sharing how to assemble Simon Says Stamps basic box card wafer die set. I've had this for a while and kept putting off making it, even though it's so easy. So I have the base to start with. So it's just the basic box card wafer die, which has the large die and then two small rectangles. And the large one you die cut twice. And with something like this, I like to reinforce all of the little score lines because the wafer die, it cuts and scores at the same time. But I like to reinforce those score lines with my bone folder using my little score buddy. Um, especially using heavyweight cardstock, like I'm using mostly Simon's cardstocks for all of this. And in the heavier weight, the cardstock, the more you want to reinforce those folds because it needs to be able to fold back and forth, which you'll see further on. And I also find that it helps to do all my scoring, like additional scoring and folding, and then I die cut the window. It just makes things easier. That's just how it works for me. So you have two window options with that die set. There's a larger one and a smaller one. I use the larger one and die cut a window out of one of the panels. So I've got the two panels here, one with window, one without. And then to create my scene on the inside of the box card, I'm using the uh, beach and sky add-on. There's actually several different add-ons that have been released over the last however many months since the first main set came out. And I'll have a link to them because they're fun. There's like a star one and a cloud set and hearts and just really fun things. So for this one, I die cut all the panels from different like various card stocks. And then same thing, I'm reinforcing all those little score lines with my bone folder, just going along scoring and then I'll fold along all of these again it will make it easier when the time comes to assemble and then when it comes to like folding it into like folding it flat to stick in the envelope so the little bit of the little extra bit of prep work just makes it easier in the end so with all of these it was super simple the white cardstock i used simon's 120 pound white cardstock i honestly should have die cut this panel from like nina 80 pound I think would have worked really nice because Simon's 120 pound white cardstock like it's it's heavyweight this is what I use for all my card bases like love this cardstock but with a panel like this with this narrow little frame <laughs> you just got to work a little harder and that's what I did I worked a little harder to make sure to like reinforce the fold or really pressed it down with the bone folder bent, like folded it back and forth a couple times because yeah really thick cardstock here so, which will stand up well. So I did all that, you know, reinforcing. And then to add to my scene, I have the Adirondack chair wafer die that just came out in Simon's Let's Chill release. It's so cute. It's so cute. So I die cut the base from darker red cardstock, Simon's Schoolhouse red cardstock. And then there's a second wafer die that die cuts like the detail pieces that you layer on top that just give it that little extra bit of dimension. So those I die cut from lipstick red, just the lighter red. It, again, it just gives it that little extra something. Although honestly, like my first instinct was to do like purple <laughs> or aqua, but I have enough kind of aqua blue on the box card itself and the red pops really nicely you know with the scenes so I went with the red but personally I was like oh, I should have done purples <laughs> anyway when it comes to assembly I highly recommend having a like a red line tape like this you know or score tape like something really strong you can use liquid adhesive and I've shown using liquid adhesive like when I'm doing like die cut envelope assembly that sort of a thing because I'm comfortable with that and even though I'm comfortable with liquid glue even I'm not going to use it for these this is just faster easier and less mess because the last thing you want is glue oozing out anywhere so all you do is apply your adhesive to just the flaps so I went along and did that I'm using this 1 8 inch red line adhesive from Simon. I use my little Tim Holtz snips for cutting this adhesive because again, it's super sticky. These are the same snips I show that I use. These are my adhesive scissors is what I call them. I use them to cut my foam tapes, anything sticky. That's what these scissors are just 
perfect for because they have that little Teflon coating. And then if you've ever worked with red line tape, you know the frustration. It's not the tape itself. It's the backing is staticky and it clings to everything. I've shown this in other videos. A fabulous subscriber told me this little trick and I never, I it just, it was life changing. All you need is a piece of paper towel. I have it right there. The backing just clings to the paper towel. So you're not fighting it. It's not clinging to your hands. Like, again, if you worked with it, you know the frustration. <laughs> so I assembled one side of this box card. That's all you need to do. You just assemble one of it and then we will continue. So once you've got that assembled, I then start adding my interior pieces, only removing the adhesive off one flap. So I'm working on what will be the like left side, but obviously everything is backwards because it's right now it's face down on my work surface. So I remove the adhesive from the left flap of each of these pieces. It doesn't really matter where, like how much you stagger them. It's just personal preference. Um, I lined all mine up along the bottom. I found that the easiest, but again, you can stagger them, kind of do whatever you want. I would suggest like the first time making one, kind of stick to the basics, keep it simple. And then once you've assembled it once, it's everything just makes sense and it's so much easier. And then you can like play with putting things wherever you want them and creating little scenes and all that fun stuff. So with a panel, like this cloud panel, um, because it's full size, I made sure the top and the bottom were lined up and now they're all adhered as you can see. And normally I would start removing all the other pieces and like actually assembling it. But before I get to that, I'm going to adhere this Adirondack chair. You can adhere it afterwards, after you've assembled it. I did that on the first attempt with this, um, but I needed to make multiples of these because they're for um, to give with gift cards to my kids' teachers. So I already knew where the Adirondack chair was going to go. So I knew where to apply the adhesive because you, again, you don't want to glue you know, sticking out where it doesn't belong. You don't want to start gluing things together that shouldn't be. <laughs> so you can always adhere it like afterwards. You can insert. It's pretty simple, but I knew what I was doing by this point. So now I've removed all the adhesive off of all of the right hand pieces and you just fold over the box card and it adheres everything. And then I just remove that last bit of adhesive to actually seal up this box card. And that's it. It's seriously so simple. But like I said, once you do it once yourself, it all just kind of makes sense. Like I was like, mm, I wasn't sure. So I sat there and fiddled. I did one. I'm like, oh, I got this. We're good. We're good. So this is what I meant by like reinforcing those score lines because you want this to be able to fold flat because the whole point of this is it will fit in an A2 envelope, which I will show at the end. So I wanted to add a couple sentiments to mine. So I used a couple sentiments from the Let's Get Away stamp set. The first one, I white heat embossed just on a piece of black cardstock that says you deserve a break. I thought that was rather fitting for teacher cards. <laughs> so I adhered that, again, being aware of where I placed my glue. So that's not sticking anywhere, isn't going to make a mess. And then I die cut uh, some Audrey Blue cardstock with uh, Simon's large pocket note wafer die. This was just perfect because you can write on the back of the box card, that's fine, but I wanted it to be able to hold a gift card and this um, large pocket note holds a gift card perfectly and then it fits on the back. And it also gives me a little extra space to write something to the teachers in this case. So I die cut it. I stamped another sentiment from the let's get away onto that saying enjoy your vacation and then put in a good old Starbucks gift card and then adhered that to the back of my box card and you guys that was it. It was so simple. There's so many ways you could bling this up and I'm still kicking myself. I have Hero Arts sand embossing powder. It's here somewhere. I looked everywhere. <laughs> I bought it last year. I know it's here. I couldn't find it, but that would have been so cute. I was going to like, you know, press first mark into the sand panels and heat emboss them before adhering them and then they'd be all textured. But yeah, there's a million things you could do. Like 
sky's the limit. I'll do more videos down the road using some of the other elements and just ways to like, yeah, zhuzh them up. But this is the basic, you know, assembly. Still super cute. And it holds the gift card, which is great. And then it fits perfectly in an A2 sized envelope, which is also super awesome. Because especially if you're going to like mail something like this, it folds super flat. So here you can see I've got one in an envelope. Voila. Love it. So again, reinforce those score lines, you know, fold it back and forth multiple times so that when the recipient does get it, it just, it's easy to pop it open and then they can like pop it, you know, set it up. It can be a little scene they can stick on their desk or on a shelf. I just, they're so cute. So like I said earlier, I will link to all the supplies I used and I'll also link to all the other little add-ons with the basic box card series that Simon has going because there's several cute ones so you can check all that out below as well as on my blog and as always thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting I very much appreciate it and I'll catch you all soon in the next video bye